let's do this. And we're going to go live. We're live. It says we're live. Is anyone following me? I don't know. But it sounds good anyways. It's like you're live, you know? All right. So there is an awesome Orchaim on this week's Parsha. And I haven't touched it yet. I don't know what it's about. But it has to do with Mashiach. So we're going to check it out. It says, Menachem Williams joined me. Menachem, you're joining me in two places. I got Menachem Williams joining me in two places. All right. So we're going to check out this Orachim. It's, uh, it's a long one. So I don't know how much we're going to get through and how late I'm going to stay up to go through it. But let's, let, let's check this out. All right. So this, this, is, this is a very, again, for those just tuning in right now, this is a very long Orachim on Mashiach and this week's Parsha. All right. The Derech Rem is, the Rem is called a perish al gilus ha-achron she'enu bod. According to the, okay, start over for a second. Let's check out the, pus, the actual Pasuk we're talking about, just to uh, backtrack. It's on the uh, the sixth chapter of the book of Leviticus, Vayikra, chapter, chapter six. And the second verse starts out, Shem spoke to Moshe, Yedabra Shem Moshe Lemar, Tzavis Aaron, command us Aaron. What does he command him? And to his children, Lemar, saying, This is the Torah of the Ola. So if you want to if you want to make an Ola offering, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to do the Torah of the Ola. He ha'ila al make it al ha'mizbeach, al ha'layla, al ha'bayke, al ha'ish ha'mizbeach, al ha'bayke. That uh, is the oil offering that stays on the flame of the Mizbeach all night until the morning, and the fire of the Mizbeach should remain a flame on it. So that is that, that's the verse that uh, we're talking about the, uh, this Ola offering. That the Ola offering uh, on top of the Mizbeach has to stay there all night until the morning, and the fire. Of the Mizbeach should remain a flame on it. Um, it's very interesting. Before we begin this, it's very interesting that uh, the there's a lot of stuff kabbalistically in all the Karbanos and all the Mishkan stuff. There's a uh, I, I found I, I actually found this digging through some old archives of mine. There is a there's an interesting story that the Alter Rebbe. Was reading a verse in Pekude, somewhere in Pekude, and was talking about the numbers, uh, a certain thing. I have to go back and find the exact verse, but uh, there's a certain thing. It's talking about all the numbers over there, and the Alter Rebbe, when he was reading it, and he basically uh, read it a different number than the ones. Something like the number was 17. Uh, I have to pull it up. Somehow he read it as uh, five thousand. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up over here. I have it in front of me. I'll find it over here. The exact lesson because I'm saying the story and, it, and it's relevant. Point is is that uh, the El Tereba. I'm gonna find you here. It's a, it's a it's a very fascinating story and it brings out a point that uh, that you have this this very cool stuff that's encoded in. Find the link here. Here we go. All right. So story goes like this: that um, where are you? That what I'm reading for what it says over here. Once, when the Alter Rebbe was the Balkora, he read the verse significantly incorrectly. Instead of reading uh, 1775. Uh, which was the number that it mentions in Pekude for I think it has to do with the hooks or something. It's 1,775. He read it as 5,775. 5,775. And he did so several times, and each time they corrected him. And this was in Parshas Pekude on verse, uh, you can check it out, uh, Lama Ches, uh, chapter Lama Ches in verse Chaf Ches, chapter 38 in verse 28 which mentions the sum of 1775 talents collected. Uh, instead of reading it, hey, and uh, ha'elif, 
he read it with a patach. He read it uh, with a tzirei, which basically became five. Point was, is that he was reading 5,775 instead of 1,175. So when the Mitzleba, his son, asked him about this, he responded that he had a vision that Mashiach would come around the year 5,775. He couldn't read it any other way. There seems to have, this seems to have been reported by the Mithra Rebbe, even in a Sefer Imebina. Some say it was edited, but later put back. Rabbi Groner asked the Rebbe about this and whether he could confirm it. And he said that he could, but he didn't want to do it until uh, the year came around, about five years ago, because he was concerned when the Rebbe started the whole We Want Mashiach Now campaign that it would interfere. But uh, the Alta Rebbe had such a, uh, such a uh, vision around uh, 2015, being a year of Gula. Anyhow, just an interesting side note, uh, introduction over here, that uh, as we tackle the Orachim on uh, this week's Parsha, that there's a lot of, you know, cool stuff about Mashiach connected and intertwined into the Parsha over here. So you have a verse that's talking about the Ola offering that's going to be on the Mizbeach, and you think, what does this have to do with Mashiach and Geulwe and all that exciting stuff? But somehow all this uh, cool stuff is tied in and connected over here. And uh, so we're going to check it out. All right. So the Earth time starts like this. He says, With their premise, to them is called that according to the uh, the approach of Remez, because we know we have shot Josh Remez, so there's lots of deeper you know, ways to learn the Torah. So according to the approach of Remez, the entire passage alludes to the final exile in which we find our, ourselves. We have four, four exiles, we're in the fourth, and this pasuk about the Ola being on Mizbeach all night long somehow is connected to us and our, and our Golas. Uh, and it comes to comfort us and our tormented souls. We could definitely say we are tormented, uh, especially now with all the crazy stuff going on, we definitely need uh, we need comforting. So, he called for the soul of every Jew refuses to be comforted upon seeing how long the exiles lasted. That is very, very true. Hi, Mendy. Thanks for joining in. Every single neshama is like, what's going on over here? It's 2,000 years. Abishta, you got to take us out of this gullus already. So, uh, Nira, I mean, uh, to appreciate the unprecedented length of this exile. Let's consider to which other exiles they can be compared to. The Mitzrayim, Abu Mais. Let's think about it. Mitzrayim. We were there at most, you know, so it's argued how long exactly we were there when we got out. But he says, uh, to Egypt officially 400 years, officially we got out early, but even the Egyptian exile, right, so we got out after two, two, two times, two twenty years. Uh, by the way, interest, whole interesting thing right now that I saw going around the, the internet that uh, we got out of Mitzrayim 200 and I think 210, 220, whatever the number is. Uh, but if you take that number that we got out early, we got out 220. Don't have it in front of me again. But if you take the number of years that we got out of Mitzrayim early and you subtract it from year 6,000, you get to 5780. Interesting uh, this year. Very interesting uh, thoughts, all the crazy corona stuff. Anyhow, uh, Mitzrayim was 400 years. All right, let's, 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 let's put things in perspective. Levavel Shavin and the Babylonian exile, 70 years. That's, by the way, the, the whole point that uh, Yirmiyahu, Yirmiyahu made a whole prophecy that they would be in Babel for 70 years. Uh, Yirmiyahu uh, in chapter 29 in Chavtes, Pasuk Yud, he says, he says that uh, after 70 years, Hashem says, Mar Hashem, that, I, that I'm going to take you out of bubble, I'm going to return you to, to Eretz Yisrael, and it's going to be awesome. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to have, you know, Mashiach after that. So the Yidden were waiting for these 70 years to be up, and after these 70 years were up, and they weren't going back to, uh, to Eretz Yisrael, so they're confused what's going on, because now Persia's got control, Paras. Paras has control over, over uh, the world, and that's what Ahasuerus said. You know what? 70 years passed. The Yidden aren't going back to uh, Eretz Yisrael. They're not building the base of Mikdash. He started putting on the, the clay and double clothes, and he says, look, 
Uh, I, I got it going for myself. I am, you know, I'm taking over the, the situation, and uh, the Yidden are stuck with me forever. But it was exactly that party at exactly that point in time. That's how things had transpired for the Yidden to end up back in Yerushalayim with the base Migdash because it was the, that whole party that he killed, uh, that he killed Vashi, he came Esther, Esther's son, uh, allowed the Yidden to return back to the base Migdash. So exactly, the, the Abishter said 70 years in bubble, that's it, seven, 70 years. And then what we want, we got to go back to, to, to Eretz Israel. So you put things in perspective, says Yerach Haim, we have 400 years of Mitzrayim, we had 70 years of bubble, and uh, the whole stream, and Babylonian exile, it was, it was 70 years. Uh, and the period between the first base of Migdash and the second base of Migdash, which uh, which lasted 70 years, was not Yachad Arbi Mayus Ushvim, or even to the sum of both together, which is 470 years. You add first, you know, the first Golas, the second Golas, you, you know, you add them all together, you know, let's put things in perspective over here. Uh, this Excel is already much longer than any of the, of these for for today, because you know, when the Orchheim was writing this, he he writes, he said, "Look where I'm holding that." You know, when the Orchheim was writing this, it was uh, 1,672 years into it. Today, we're already uh, Kanai Har, we're already 2,000 years into into the Gullus. but the Orchheim was like making a point over here. And he's saying, you know, well, we're 1,672 years into this uh, whole situation. Let's, uh, you know, let, let, let's get out of here already. Let's let, let's hope for Mashiach at this point. Like, what's taking so long? What, what why is this uh, why is this whole whole exile of the Jewish nation from the land of Israel lasting so long? Machil Oid, and therefore a person must despair and say, for why should I continue to hope? You know what? I saw I saw comments going on online today. People are writing that uh, ah, it's the Corona. You know, Mashiach. You know, I, some, somebody was writing. He says uh, Mashiach didn't come after World War II. He didn't come after the Holocaust. What makes you think he's coming now during a coronavirus? You know, what, 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 why do you, what, what do you get so excited for? You know, at, at this point, two thousand years in, now because of Corona, Mashiach's going to get excited and he's going to come because of Corona. Why do I keep hoping and waiting and, and, and hoping that Mashiach is going to come? The low goes levad elo eno amos, and it's not not only the exile from our land that we have experienced, but we have been oppressed by the nations of the world as well. We don't need to speak at all what means uh, the exiles and the tortures that we have gone to gone through, and they carry over to this very generation. No need to elaborate on that point. He called Goy Malacha the Bnei Yisrael Yavdu for every nation and kingdom subjugate, subjugates the Jewish people. They get the chance; they go after us. They get the chance; they go after us. Uh, this week in Lakewood, this week in Lakewood, they uh, they had it going on down over here. Last week, they had already people trying to blame the Jews for the Corona. There was a guy over here that uh, that uh, they sent. They arrested him. He was threatening. He says, "Listen." It's the Jews. They're responsible. They caused all this. They did all this damage from the corona. And he needs to take a – he wrote on Facebook. He said, I'm going to take a baseball bat, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to start saving our nation. I'm going to start saving our people because we got to start eliminating the Jews because the Jews are the ones responsible for the corona disease. So, uh, you know, we got to be careful. Uh, you know, what, 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 what – even today, people just blame us for everything. Um, so – Every nation tries to go out uh, and after us. The Efsha is that Yosef Choyshev Loy Toiv, and this can cause one to entertain improper thoughts. Listen, we're in this 2,000 years. Every nation in the world tries to subjugate us, tries to destroy us, tries to make us problems. And you're going to think Mashiach's coming now? All right, come on. Like, what, 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 what are you getting so excited about? After that, so this can cause you to have bad thoughts. Kishafas, I must lo lo hakar bechonas after lashon sheker. That contrary to the what the verse says in Mishlei, there's a verse in Mishlei which says true speech is established forever, but a false tongue is only for a moment. Uh, the reality is, true speech is not marked by its durability, and it is false tongue that in fact, in, in fact endures. So, 
let's see. Let's go further. All right. He says over here. Because the Jewish people in the future generations would suffer so greatly and would be in danger of entertaining such mistaken thoughts, Hashem, who sees uh, and peers into, uh, into all generations and who proclaims all of the generations from the beginning of times. So he's saying over here, I think he's going to start, uh, you know, give, give me, giving a, a little bit of an explanation over here. So he says, Hashem has a vision. Hashem has a vision. Just like Martin Luther King, he had a dream. Hashem has a vision, and he sees all people, all time, all generations. He sees from the beginning of creation, and he sees to the end of creation. It's confusing. The, the, the webcam goes from this way, opposite way. Hashem sees from all times. All generations, everything that happens. And Hashem sees exactly what is happening in the entire world and in all time. And based on this, the idea of the Moshe, the Moshe, the Zara's Israel of Rosh Hashanah, the Torah. And he told Moshe uh, in our passage to encourage the Jewish people, and particularly those who learn in Torah, Shifse Koyhin Asher Tida. Yvachin would be Ardon Ivanov, the lips of the Koyen, whose mouth they seek teaching, aka Aaron and his sons, the idea that there is a Hazet, will inform future generations of the following matter. So he's going to explain how this is all connected to Mashiach over here. We're about to see how this uh, this this verse, for those who are just turning in now, we're talking about a verse of Stora Chaim, and he's talking about a verse in this week's Parsha, uh, the second verse in this week's Parsha, and he's showing how it relates to Mashiach. And uh, the Golos and the, the redemption. This, uh, this is what, what we should learn from Ayra, from Aaron and his sons. This is the teaching of one that ascends, the, the, the Ayla offering. That one, uh, one that although that uh, downtrodden in exile is destined, uh, that one who is downtrodden in exile is destined to rise to great heights. How do we see this? The verse in which uh, is speaking about the end of the final exile specifically uses the word this. Uh, this uh, excludes all other uh, ascents from exile, for there is no ascent like this one. They're arising from, from the final exile. The Orachim is saying over here something very interesting. He says that, uh, yes, it's true. That uh, there are people that uh, uh, have been we've been we've been we've been pushed down, we've been we've been uh, trampled on throughout the the journey over here, but the step up from this dulles, uh, how how this whole thing is going to come to an end, it's going to be one miraculous journey. It's going to be something absolutely absolutely incredible. Says the Orachim. So it's interesting, by the way. I, I, I'm, I haven't learned this Orachim yet, and uh, the Orachim sometimes is uh, very, very, very mystical. And it's interesting that it's, it's actually this week's Parsha that he's talking about all this, and not just some uh, little tiny piece, but he actually has pages and pages and pages on this week's tar- Parsha talking about this concept, talking about how uh, the final a- exile is going to end. And we're going to go on, th- on through this over here. But he, he's talking about how Mashiach comes, and it, it's all related to this week's Parsha. So it's very interesting that it's, uh, this is what we're reading right now. And if you learn the Orachim, this is, this is exactly what the Orachim is talking about. So he goes on like this. He says that the coming out of this exile is going to be something amazing. Uh, he, uh, so he then goes on to clarify to whom it is referring to. Amar hi kavar. And to this end, it says... It is the one that has all uh, that that has already, at the time this verse was said, ascended from exile, I, aka the Jewish people who have already gone out of Egypt. Dixiv mi zois aila min medaber. Indeed, we find the Jewish people who went out of Egypt are described as having ascended. For in describing them, the verse says, "Who is ascending from the wilderness?" By the way, interesting, interesting uh, thought, interesting, uh, interesting takeaway. 
that uh, when we think about what's happening uh, at the end of time, the Zohar tells us that uh, the generation that goes out of the Golas, the final Golas, is going to be a Giligal. It's going to be a reincarnation of the generation that went out of Mitzrayim. So uh, we know the Lubav Trevor tells us this is the last generation of Golas, first generation of Gula. So if uh, we believe that, then we have to believe the Zohar, which says that that generation, this generation, is a is a uh, is a Giligal, it's a reincarnation of the generation that went out of Mitzrayim. So we were there. We were we were literally there when we uh, when we say we saw you at Sinai, and we say that uh, you know we were at Har Sinai. It was this generation. It was literally this generation. All right. The next part of the verse alludes to the reason why the final redemption will bring the Jewish people to the greatest heights. All the verse describes the one that ascends as being on the uh, on the flame, on the mizbeach. The phrase refers to two characteristics that describe the situation in which we find ourselves. The first is that we learned in Torah something that is not true of any other nations. And the second is that we uh, is that we, to a greater degree than any other nation, are afflicted by exile, suffering, and poverty. The Jewish nation have, as we said, there's no need to to describe uh, describe what we've been through. You know the famous joke. But Nachum, you still there? Still with me? Famous joke that uh, the Jew, it's, a, it's very, very, very relevant now. There's a Jew and a, uh, and a, uh, uh, a Jap, uh, a, a Jew and a Chinese guy. Always a Jew and a Chinese guy. By the way, you know what, you know what CJ stands for, Menachem, right? CJ, you know what CJ stands for? Chinese and Jew. Anyhow, so there's a, uh, uh, there's a Chinese guy and a Jewish guy. They're in a bar, and uh, the Chinese guy, he uh, he punches the Jewish guy, and uh, he says, uh, "What was that for?" He uh, he says, uh, "Sorry, I said I'm telling the joke wrong. We gotta flip it out." First, the uh, the Jewish guy punches the Chinese guy. The Chinese guy says, "What was that for?" He says, "Ah, that was for bombing uh, Pearl Harbor." He says, Pearl Harbor, that was Japanese. Chinese, Japanese, same thing. All of a sudden, a Chinese guy snock, snocks him back right in the face. And he says, what was that for? He says, you know what that was for? He says, that was for sinking the Titanic. He said, sinking the Titanic, the Titanic, oh, the Titanic sunk by an iceberg. He says, iceberg, Goldberg, same thing. All right. Anyhow. Back to back to the Rachaim. The Rachaim says, so to talk about the situation in which we find ourselves, that no nation has been afflicted, no nation on earth has been oppressed as much as the Jews have gone through. We've been through we've been through our ups and downs. We've been through a lot of tough situations. We've been through uh, high to- high times, low times. We've been through it all. Says the Rachaim. Um. So he says like this. With respect to the Jewish people, it's connection to the Torah. The verse says, on, on the flame, for the Torah is compared to fire. We, we are talking, for those who are just joining us now, we are talking about uh, the second verse in this week's parsha. The Orachim has a whole, whole many pages about Mashiach and its connection to Mashiach. And going on and on, so we're learning this uh, very interesting piece, and uh, seeing how uh, he talks about how this exile, this, this fourth exile, is going to end. And he's talking about the fire on the mizbeach, and how it goes up, and how this kabbalistically refers to the Jews going out of Egypt, and go, not going out of Egypt, going out of the, the final exile. So we compare Aish, the flame, to Torah. Torah is compared to fire, 
as uh, as it says in uh, Yirmiyahu, Yirmiyahu says, says it, Shenemar HaTorah Le'esh, that uh, the Yirmiyahu says the Torah is like fire. V'chein timsa she'amru razal, she'amru razal, and likewise our sages of less memory say, in the Gemara and Tainus, Hai tzarban merabanan the rasa raisa v'chulu, when a young and sharp Torah scholar becomes heated, uh, it is the fire of Torah that heats him. So we have a, we have a lot of comparisons between Torah and fire. There's, there's a lot of comparisons between Torah and fire. We can negate Hagolas of Anafav Amar Al Hamizbayah, and with respect to the exile and all its consequences, such as the suffering and poverty, the verse says on the Mizbayah, Ki Hayisurin. Uh, so the suffering is aptly referred to by the term Mizbeach, since it atones for sins. We know that the Mizbeach was there. That was the, the point. You bring a carbon to the Mizbeach, Mizbeach takes care of your sins. By the way, side note, uh, you know, we, we, when, you, when you offer a carbon, so you're supposed to confess your sins. You're supposed to cry out to the Avister and, and, and talk to the Avister and confess. It was a uh, news article that uh, was up yesterday, two days ago, that uh, the Pope came out and he said that in the case that you happen to be not able to find the Galach to confess your sins, it's all right to talk to God directly. You can you can confess your sins directly to an avister. Side point. So the mizbeach is supposed to be there. It's supposed to take care of our of, of our sins, and we know that Torah is referred to as fire. So we're 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 getting an understanding of how this verse uh, plays out because this verse is talking about how we're going out of uh, out of this gullus. So continuing here in the Orachim. The chain belushin chamim, and as our sages say in uh, the Talmud in Brachos in five b, the sages say that uh, the mizbeach is related to atonement. We do a hakasa by describing the Jewish people as a flame on the mizbeach. That we are the, we are the Torah on the mizbeach. What is this say? What is this saying? The verse informs us kiva ah. The Atmus Shnei that because of these two things, our connection to Torah and the suffering we have endured, to hear Alusenu Meyados the Haf Lados Meilos Meshenas the Shavach Shavach Shavachim, our ascent from exile is destined to be accompanied by exceptionally great things, distinctive in the most praiseworthy way. Asher Lo Haya Lo Yia. Things which have never, uh, never before occurred and never again will occur. What the Archaim is telling us, what we know. Oh, goodbye, Menachem. We want to, want to, uh, we want to. Sit. Menachem is leaving us. Menachem, special Mazel Tov to Menachem uh, for all those who are joining on his, on his uh, giving birth. I know it was a very traumatic experience for you to give birth, but even more to your wife. Uh, special shout out, Menachem, and uh, you will let us know the baby's name in the proper time. And we look forward to sharing in only some plus. Anyhow, back on to the Shear, back on to our learning over here. Uh, we know that um, we know that we, ha we have a connection to uh, this Pusik because the Pusik talks about fire, it talks about uh, the Mizbeach fire is talking about Torah. Mizbeach talks about uh, Mizbeach talks about atoning for sin. So he says that as we come out of this gullus, as we come out of this exile, it's going to be in a way, in a miraculous way, like we've never seen before. It's going to be something, something amazing, something awesome over here. By the way, is anyone with me? I see one person live over here. I don't know if you if you're here, say hello. I'd love a shout out. I don't know who's still here. Anyhow, so. Uh, let's continue over here in the Orich Hayim, how we go forward over here. So, 
he says, we do all of Oh, sorry, we, we did this part. So we know that we're going to, something, something amazing is going to happen coming out of this Gullus. Whatever happens over here in this Gullus, how we come out of the Gullus, Orachim says it's going to be in an in, in, in incredible way. Let's continue. Uh, the Yar on my, uh, my say, yeah, you sell, uh, the Gedda Shnei Devarim Elu. The verse then clarifies until one of the Jewish people will remain in a situation defined uh, by these two things, but having to do with the, the with the Eish and the Mizbeach. Kol ha'laila shehu zman ha'gelos nimsha laila. To the end, uh, it first says all night, which refers to a period of exile, which is compared to the night. So for those who are just joining us again, uh, we are talking about the second verse in this week's Parsha, Parsha Tzav, and the Orachim is saying how this talks about the Jews going out of out of, uh, out of Gullus. So uh, he's saying that the reference to, just go back to the Pasuk over here, check it out, what's the exact Pasuk? I wish we could pull it up on the screen over here. It'd be very cool. Um, it says, the old offering uh, stays on the Mizbeach, uh, on uh, the Ola offering stays on the flame. We have the Ola offering, and it has to stay on the flame, on the Mizbeach, all night long. So the Ola, uh, I guess, is going to refer to Kla Yisrael, and the flame is our Torah, and the Mizbeach atones for us, and all night is a reference to the Golas. Ad Habaykir. So let's get to this Ad Habaykir, but let's, let's first finish with this, this uh, situation. All night long. Kol halayla. Shehuz mana galas nim shalayla. To this end, it first says all night, which refers to a period of exile, which is compared to at night. Shemir ma melayla. It says in Yeshaya, watchmen, what of the night, which is the sages in Sanhedrin 94, interpret the question to the length of the exile. I question, how long is this exile going to last? They ask. How long are we going to be here in Golos? Likewise, with respect to the verse in Rus, in uh, Rus it says, uh, that uh, stay, for, uh, stay the night. The sages have said in the Zohar that the night is referring to the exile. So when we find night in scripture, night is a Kabbalistic reference to the exile that we are in. The verse then says, until the morning, which is the time when Hashem will pour his glory upon us, and the morning of the redemption will come. As we shall demonstrate, the time for this morning is after 500 years of the sixth millennium have passed. As mentioned, uh, that Orachim wrote this in the year 5500 or 5501, very near to the end of the first half of the sixth millennium. So now we're 5780. He wrote this at 5,500, about 280 years ago. Laura uh penned this down. So, uh, yeah. So, Sat, so he says over here that uh, we know we've been in Gullahs for a long time. We've been here for five, uh, you know, the second 500 years are, are kind of right today. So, uh, but I do a key. Bear with me a second. All right. So he says he is equal to a thousand. Uh, sorry, here. It is after 500 years of the sixth millennium have passed. The theme uh, uh, Lanu, based on what our sages, uh, uh, what we already know from the words of our sages, blessed memory. That, that a day of the Holy One, blessed be He, is equal to a thousand human years, a millennium. It uh, is therefore reasonable to conclude that the first 500 year, uh, years of a millennium are characterized as night. Meaning if we split, if we split, uh, if we split 
24 hour period, you got half of that's day and half of that's night. So uh, we're already into the period close to Mashiach. We're already into a period, uh, you know, the, 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 the dawn is breaking into the sixth millennium. We know we're getting close to Mashiach. Even the Zohar says, famous Zohar, that uh, in the, you know, that in a certain year in the, in the sixth millennium, that the wellsprings of the deep are going to shoot forth. And that referred to the 1850s and the, and the Industrial Revolution. We know that uh, that was the, the common explanation of what took place at that point in time. So he says that we're getting close to Mashiach. We're definitely getting close to the morning over here. Meaning that when the end of the uh, night, uh, the 500 years of exile take us into the morning of a millennium, uh, that, that's when the ascent of the Jewish people and the final exile will occur. Thus, the verse is teaching us the redemption will occur at the beginning of the second half of the millennium, at the very beginning of the morning. So we're, we're, we're already, says Zerah Chaim, you don't have to think about this because, you know, at that, at that point in time, he was trying to say that it was the beginning of the morning. Now we're already into, like, the afternoon already. We're already into midday of uh, this Golas. Anyhow, I am going to stop here for the night. We've, uh, we've already been live for 36 minutes, and uh, 36 is two times high. So we will conclude here for tonight. And uh, if people want to join us, Hashem, tomorrow night we will pick back up and check out more of the Orachim and how he connects this week's Parsha to uh, Golas, Mashiach, and the final redemption. It's a long piece. It's a long segment. A good couple pages over here. Very worthwhile to uh, check it out. Chaim, good night. And you can tune back into the live broadcast and tune in tomorrow night as we go over more Orachim HaKadosh.